Hey everybody, Lauren Bentley here. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's interview all about the, the magic of Mother Mary with a good friend of mine, Natalie Parsons. Natalie is an incredibly talented, intuitive healer, reader, and guide, as well as a chakra yoga teacher. I highly recommend you looking in the description below so that you can see how you can follow her, find her work, and work with her because I know that you're really going to connect with her beautiful energy that she's, that she's here to offer. And Natalie and I, just like a lot of social media relationships, we've never actually met in person, but throughout the years of connecting with one another and taking in each other's content, we've definitely have formed a really beautiful relationship with one another. And a big part of our relationship is tied together with this whole Mother Mary and, and Mary Magdalene and this Christ consciousness. And I was really excited to get Natalie on here so her and I can jam about our experiences with this, our experiences with religion and spirituality and how it all kind of seems to come full circle to be kind of, to, to want to walk away from the church and then to enter into your enlightenment and come full circle back to Christ consciousness and what it all even means. It's a really beautiful conversation that we have with one another. We talk about the importance of self-love, of connection, of like a lot of the truth that was left out of the Bible and has since been discovered, like really recently discovered. So before hopping into the interview, I do want to tell you about the Breathe and Receive membership. So the Breathe and Receive membership is my baby. I am in love with this community that's growing beautifully each and every day with brand new members. And this community grows the first of every month with a brand new theme. The library continues to grow and grow and grow. So even upon purchase, you have immediate access to over $1,500 worth of breathwork and meditation journeys and Reiki healing, EFT tapping, so many awesome offers. We work through different themes like worthiness, shadow, heart opening, connecting with spirit guides and angels, reclaiming your sacred sensuality, and it, the July's theme is Christ Consciousness, where we're going to be learning about forgiveness and heart opening with Mary Magdalene. We're going to experience a beautiful Reiki healing in rose water with Mother Mary and bask in the golden light of Christ Consciousness. It's going to be a beautiful month of just really anchoring into your heart and connecting to your soul. So as I said, the library grows and grows each and every month. And when you purchase, you have access to months and months and months of amazing content and support. And what's even better is that I'm currently offering the first month completely free. There is no contracts. So if you're not even vibing with it, if you're like, this isn't for me, I'm not really using it, you can just cancel and you literally lose nothing. If you do enjoy it, it's only $25 a month. Never any contracts, never hidden fees. The membership price is never going to go up. It's just love and connection, community support. So again, the link to that is also going to be in the description below. And I look forward to welcoming you all in with open arms. All right, friends, without further ado, enjoy today's interview, The Magic of Mother Mary. Hey, welcome, welcome, Conscious Coaching Community. I'm here with my friend, Natalie Parsons. Thank you so much for coming on with me today. Mm, thank you for having me. We, um, we're going to be talking about Mother Mary and just like our experiences with working with her. And I'm excited for this because as I've been, you know, kind of like promoting myself on social media, uh, and Natalie has been commenting on it, and then we get into... Uh, like when I was speaking about Mother Mary and just like all the times I've ever spoken about her, you've always been like, oh my God, like I have so many cool stories of her, like all, all of this stuff. And I'm just like, well, we need to talk about this because it's, 
it's just really exciting. And um, I've just never met anybody else who has like interesting stories about it. So I'm just so excited to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting because on the other end of like what you just shared, I feel like I have this really unique relationship with her and it's not too many, um, not too often that I meet other people outside of, you know, the, the Christianity religion <laughs> and people who are strongly connected to that um, faith share these relationships and experiences and channelings like yourself. So it's... Yeah. I'm just so excited. Yes, yes. And it just, it's cool to like have this space to share it because I don't know about you, but for a long time, I felt really nervous to share it because like we said before, I pressed record that when, when you enter into more of like the spirituality part of, of, of living in life, we, a lot of us come from like uh, churches and religion that just really left a bad taste in our mouth and so we want really nothing to do with Jesus and, and the word God and then even like you know Mother Mary and, and even Mary Magdalene and you know just so, the Bible in general uh, but we we tend to come full circle back to it like when you really begin to awaken like you really are stepping into that Christ consciousness and it yeah. doesn't need to mean like this like dude in the sky like it can mean christ consciousness is just it's, it's love it's unity it's peace it's it's like this that beautiful radiance that golden light mm. and it's so interesting because for like my background i don't know if you're aware of this um because i you know on my insta feed i share a lot about being a yoga teacher but i actually grew up in a very strict catholic household Mm. And I did share a video about like coming out of the spiritual closet and all of the the work I had to do around the undo undoing and unlearning of, you know, everything that I was taught. And what's interesting, I am just so grateful for it, for that deep, deep rooted background. And my my mom was so heavily involved that we actually priests would basically come to our house once a month to um, eat supper. The archbishops would come when anyone in like the religious hierarchy would visit the province. They would also come to our home. <laughs> wow. We were, yeah. So we were heavily involved and I grew up singing in the church choir until I was 19 when I moved out of my house and then I left the church simultaneously. But it's interesting because as a child, I always knew there was more and I could, I was always asking questions. So when the priests and archbishops would come to our home, I'd be asking them questions. And it drove my mom crazy, <laughs> crazy, because she thought they were wildly inappropriate because I wanted to know more and in depth. And there were so many like rules and regulations in the in the structure of the Catholic faith that I could just see beyond that. Mm -hmm. And my experience was, was more than that. And I just wanted answers that no one was really providing at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I did not grow up Catholic. We were more so of non-denominational, okay. but uh, still, I still remember, you know, laying in bed at night, scared out of my mind that I was just going to like burn for eternity in hell. And I just didn't understand why if somebody was supposed to love us so much, then why was he, why was this, this guy I'm supposed to be like worshiping? Why was he so judgmental? And, right. and, and, and I just kind of like put up at this wall to the church. And then even when, after my son was born and I had my son at only 17 and I felt like to be a good mom, I'm supposed to take him to church. And then, so I started taking my son to church and people wouldn't speak to me. Like they just kind of shunned me because here I am, this incredibly young mom, like, and I looked really young. So even younger than like 18, 19 that I was at the time that I started taking him. And I'm just like, why, why is there so much judgment in a place that we're supposed to be loving and accepting of all? 
So even like when I started, when people started telling me that they were seeing like Mother Mary standing behind me and I'm just like, what, why, why, what is going on here? I really didn't know anything about her because I didn't grow up Catholic. So I didn't grow up like praying to her. All I knew was that she was a virgin who, you know, gave birth to Jesus. And that never made any sense to me either. <laughs> so it was very, like, there's such an interesting chain of events that have happened. And, like, I remember, like, one of the first times it happened for me was I went to go get a, like, a, a spirit guide reading. And she was, like, drawing my spirit guide and everything. But as soon as I sat down, she goes, did you grow up Catholic? I said, No. I didn't. I'm just like, that's a weird question to ask me. And she's like, because Mother Mary is standing right behind you. And Mother Mary isn't necessarily a guide, whether that was at least her belief. I, I'm not too sure. I, I really do think she is a guide. Um, mm -hmm. But ever since then, I'm just like, wow. And people will just stop me and tell me that, like, you are so protected. Mary is with you. Like, I'm just just blown away by it all. And it's it's lovely. It's this beautiful nurturing and energy that I try to just open myself up to to surrender to and receive as much as I possibly can. Yeah, and I truly believe that, you know, no matter what background you come from, no matter what beliefs Mother Mary and any other deity to, can come to any human and it all really it's it's and and i can really relate because that's when i first met you one of the essences that i could feel strongly was that mother mary essence and that deep like you know christ consciousness so it's it's interesting that you're bringing it in now because it's not something i i spoke when we initially met but I could feel that, like, mm, that, like, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, like, the three Marys, like, surrounding you. Oh, my God, I just got, like, chills all over my body. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's incredible. I am so grateful to hear that. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about your experiences. I mean, if you have, like, a crap ton, maybe just, like, the ones that, like, stick out the <laughs> most. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, um, since I was a child, I, I'm very intuitive. Um, so for those of you who, who don't know me, I'm, I'm an intuitive um, reader, and I, I always seen things growing up. And when I was in church, I started seeing, you know, Mother Mary sit in different spots around the church, and it was so cool. And then I would also see the angels on the ceilings, and they would, like, wave, and it was it's quite incredible to have that gift of sight. And one of my like first strongest, strongest memories of, you know, Mother Mary was actually when I was 15. And I was going through an incredibly, incredibly challenging time. Um, I actually was I actually was connected to a social worker to help me get through like trauma and childhood trauma. And so I had to, after school, once a week, or maybe it was twice a week, however often, I would get on the bus and it was an hour bus ride into the city. And I remember the first time stepping on that bus going to see the social worker. I, I was like shaking, I was scared, I was crying. And I sat on the bus and I was like, okay, just, I need to know that you're here, that someone's here. I was basically talking to like anyone and everyone from beyond. I'm like, I, I need to know. Mm -hmm. And it was so incredible. So I could feel a hand. Um, I was closing my eyes and I could feel the hand on my hand. Mm -hmm. And I could feel this entirely like, warming energy come over my entire body. I opened my eyes and in the reflection of the bus window, I could see Mother Mary. And she was like glowing and smiling at me and telling me everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And then within minutes, a complete stranger on the bus, this woman that I had no idea looked at me and said, everything's going to be okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> it was, and that was like confirmation. I was like, okay, that woman 
channeled Mary for that moment and she came through Mm -hmm. and I knew from that moment on I'm like okay thank you you're here everything will be okay and it it was (laughs) yeah yeah wow so I'm curious to know um growing up in a really strict catholic home yeah and you had these visions did your parents know do people know that you had these visions so I tried, so this is the interesting part is I tried talking to my mom about it a lot, but she said to me that, um, the gift is in the family, but you can't talk about it because it is, it is of the devil. So to see things, I know it's kind of all these weird, crazy things. So I wasn't supposed to tell anyone that I had visions or could see things or know things that people didn't know. Um, or about them. The other thing that growing up that was really challenging is I was fascinated with religion. I was fascinated with beliefs and it was before the time of the internet. And so back in the, you know, the, the early mid nineties, Yes, the good old days. I love the good the old days. <laughs> so what I had to do for information was I literally, I walked a half an hour to the library I would go to the encyclopedia section Mm -hmm. and I would have a pocket full of change to photocopy pages of the encyclopedia of all the different religions. And I would sit there and I would read and I would photocopy and I would highlight. And I created this entirely like large binder of like notes and things, including everything from like Buddhist to witchcraft to just, everything you can think of I found because I was looking for answers I think that like searching that seeker was within me because I wanted to understand like why why was I the only one at that time that I knew of that had these visions that had these psychic abilities and no one was talking about it and my mom found my binder and she destroyed it Mm. i was not allowed not allowed to talk about to go to to research any other belief or religion zero so she destroyed my binder and i was devastated i started a new one in secret and kept it in my school locker um for it to be protected and safe. And secretly, I went out to other churches as a teenager um, behind her back, the rebellious teenager. <laughs> going to church. <laughs> I'll show you, Mom. I'm going to other goddamn church. <laughs> right? I love it so much. <laughs> like, it's kind of it's funny, but that was, that was what I needed to do. It was, it was very strict and very hard. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect of that, that I was trying to show her was she was actually simultaneously, we were um, French, grew up in a French family. And so, but in an English community and there was no French services where we were at. And she was trying to actually start a French service within the church because she had just started the French school. So we were fighting for a lot of equal rights between the French and English at that time. And um, she fought tooth and nail to get like a French priest in, get a French mass going. And I could actually sense, I had that spidey sense that it wasn't going to work out because it was all about money. I said, mom, it's not going to work out. If it doesn't make money, they're going to get rid of it. And unfortunately within i think four years they came to her and said it's not making money we need to get rid of your french service and that's when actually she decided to leave the church and yeah and was completely devastated and i was you know i was also heartbroken for her because what you know what do you do (laughs) what do you do wow so she's left the church. So I'm assuming now like what you do today is welcomed and accepted or are they kind of unclear as to what you do? They don't really understand what I do. <laughs> I mean, same. 
father is actually a lot more open. Like he'll come to my yoga classes and he said it reminds him of church when I own and share mantra. Mm -hmm. Um, but my, my mother is, is not, is not there. She has no understanding, no concept. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, who is Mary to you, Mother Mary? Who, who is she to you? Like, how do you view her? See, that's, that's a really good question. I view her as this, like, for me, she's like the root or almost like the tree of that, like, divine feminine energy essence. And if you visualize like the tree and either the roots or the branches, either way, going in either direction. I almost see all the other deities and feminine essences kind of like coming from that, almost like a a web. And she, for me, is that beautiful, unconditional love for self. Mm -hmm. Um, that divine feminine energy that is also the earth. You know, I also view her as, you know, holding us here on the planet, almost like that great connector with um, Gia and Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. But she is really that energy that, that holds us all. And we are always welcome in her womb. Uh, so to speak, for for purification and for healing and for transformation. And for me, I see her um, as someone to also connect to when you really want to be seen and completely nurtured. Yes, yes, yes. I totally feel that. (laughs) Her and Mary Magdalene, you know, just such this the embodiment of like the divine, sacred, feminine that you can be all the things yeah. and I think and when what I love the most is like really looking past the Bible like before the Bible before Christianity and getting into like back into when we, you know we were uh witches and you know like we lived off the earth because you can see through cave paintings all across the world where all these civilizations were mother god was worshipped so God's been worshipped as a woman longer than a man. Yes. Um, and, and I love Mary Magdalene's gospel because she refers to God as the good, not male or female. God's just mm. good. And I, and I love to think of that as well. Like, you know, why does God have to be uh, a sex, right? Why can't I can't just be all the things. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I was like, I, so, so mother God has been worshiped for a very long time. And then when Christianity began and Catholicism began and, uh, you know, the patriarchs started to really take over and they were feeling just so I don't, scared by the power of a woman, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I can't help but to think, you know, the, the library of Alexander that was bur- that burned down, that had all the original written words. Like, that wasn't like an accidental fire. Like, they, no. they burned that down so they could rewrite it so that it could fit them, right? Mm-hmm. And I also believe, too, that, like, so many women became nuns because they were worshiping. Like, you were saying, like, how you believe, like, Mother Mary is to be, like, the earth. You know, yeah. we were worshiping like Mother God, and we were like, we're like worshiping the earth. And so, so many women went into the nunnery as a way to still worship Mother God, but in a very safe way to Mother Mary, you know? So, and I love how she's like tied in there with just like our original roots. And mm-hmm. like, and I also love like to pull apart like names as well. Like, Virgin originally meant like, meant like independent a woman, like a woman of her own. And Mary, Mary actually means female rabbi, female teacher. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's incredible. So it's like, she wasn't exactly, she wasn't a virgin, (laughs) you know, (laughs) she had Jesus. Like she is that she she wasn't sexless. It just, sex is part of like a woman's power. It's a huge part of our power. And so of course, that's the first thing they wanted to strip away from us was our power that we possess. So yeah. They took her into just a complete sexless being when she was just a woman of her own, you know? Yeah. And have you heard of the reference of like the three Marys? Have you heard of that? I'm not sure. 
Okay, so it's actually um, referred to in Christianity. Um, you can Google it and go on a tangent afterwards. <laughs> but the three Marys are Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene and Mary's Mary Magdalene's sister Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene also had a sister Mary that a lot of people don't realize, and I'm confused as to why some would name two children Mary, but whatever. <laughs> Right. Very <laughs> good. <I'd say. laughs> so um, what's interesting about the three Marys is they often have come to people um, as like in prophecies in in channelings. And so people have channeled the three Marys. And so it is believed and there's a few different threads on this, but that they're all essentially the same essence that the three marys are are the same essence and different versions of that essence and share different medicines so to speak and i find that really fascinating to look at them as a threesome and as individuals because the three of them together combined really have that mother daughter sister because if you look at Mary Magdalene in the perspective of the potential daughter-in-law, <laughs> if you yeah, know, yeah. Um, so so you see that triad there, and it's and it's so interesting to to look at that aspect of the Marys as well. So yeah, you can go ahead and research that. There's a lot of neat things there, and you also mentioned the the nuns how the nuns safely step into being um nuns to you know worship the great mother mary there's a lot of truth to that i have actually met people who have told me there's you know no documents but there are nuns that passed on wisdom in secret teachings mm. of um the mother mary and mary magdalene and it's pretty incredible to to hear that and and um yeah i actually spent time with with nuns growing up so it was really interesting to see their perspective yeah i'd love to think about that that they were passing on the the knowledge of the divine feminine you know keeping her alive yeah. because even gosh the gospel of mary magdalene I forget what century it was, but it was there was an order put out to destroy all of the Gospels. And uh, there were some rebellious rabbis that hid them, they buried them, and they've been slowly finding them, uncovering them. But what's really interesting is the first seven pages, and then there's a part like in the middle of the Gospel that's removed in every copy that they have found. And like the ants like what they're thinking is is in those missing pages is like the answer of how to like just truly be one with like jesus and god's wisdom and so yeah. i'm still like hoping because i mean these have started to be to be uncovered recently i mean it's been it's exciting recently. yeah <laughs> so I, they're gonna find one copy i know it that's gonna have every page in it and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I agree. And I think there is a reason. So those who like read the Bible, Mary Magdalene's mentioned three times in the Bible. And if you look at like a lot of the, the paintings and artistry, um, she's there with Jesus in a lot of them. And you just don't even realize it. And because she was the first one when Jesus, after his resurrection and came out of the, the tomb, he, Mary was the first one he went to mm -hmm. and and then after that you know she was the one who spread the word that Jesus has resurrected and I all that story alone has so much resonance and so much power and I feel that it speaks to even though the Bible left out everything else to do with Mary Magdalene that alone shows her importance. Mm -hmm. That alone speaks volumes as to who Mary Magdalene truly was. Yeah. Yes. I completely agree. It's just, you know, Jesus had several female teachers, female disciples along with him. Mm -hmm. uh, it is completely written out. And even like in the Gospel of Mary, 
you know, you can see too that like the, the the male disciples were jealous of her being like the most favorited. And um, it, it's just really interesting to see. But even like Thecla, and I've only recently been starting to read about Thecla. Um, she would, she performed healings and teachings with Paul. Okay, um, no, I didn't read that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's pretty interesting. She's, she survived three different um, killings that they tried, they tried to, they tried to kill her. And she survived all three of them just by remembering the power that she held within herself. But wow. she's, she's completely taken out of the Bible, but she's a really powerful teacher as well. It's just awesome to see. But she lived to be like close to 100 years old performing teachings and healings. And she was just destroyed. But their, their gospel, Paul and Thecla's gospel, there is a lot of copies. So it was read a lot until they were forced to be like buried and hidden. But, you know, those are also have been resurfacing as well. Yeah. So it just, it just incredible to me. It's, it just really, it's just really fun to, to look at the bigger picture and go beyond what it is that we've been taught. And especially a lot of just the, the manipulation, control and fear that's been pushed down our throats, even viewing Mary Magdalene as a whore. And I love though, that within, I think eighties or nineties, I think it was in the nineties, maybe even in the two thousands, I don't know, but the Catholic church came out and made a public announcement. They apologized for creating her to be this whore. And they're like, no, oh, yeah, she really wasn't one. <laughs> no, not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, yeah, and I'm curious as you're sharing this, because I know um, you do healing work and energy work, um, in your sessions with clients or with yourself, do you call in either Mother Mary or Mary Magdalene in your sessions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I call in both of them. Yeah. yeah, both the Marys. And now I want to look into Mary's sister, Mary, right. um, and so <laughs> work, with, work with the three Marys. Um, I've always heard about the three Marys, but like I just was always just called to Magdalene and Mother Mary. But yeah, I call, I call them in for sure. I mean, and people always tell me that like my energy is just this very soft, gentle, nurturing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is <laughs> because like, it's just what, you know, the energy that I call forth as well. And I definitely have been working to even embody more of Mary Magdalene's as well. And just really um, allow myself to be guided through my womb space and just touching more, a little bit more into the sensuality because even though she, you know, obviously was not a whore, you know, it just like, it, it just it irritates me on how much they, you know, Jesus was a human. Yeah. Mary Magdalene is, was a human as well. I mean, of course, yeah. a, they loved each other. They had sex with each other. <laughs> <laughs> and we were always just taught that, oh, sex is bad. And, you know, we, we were taught to worship Mother Mary for being a virgin and for being so pure. Like, no, like it's, so it's it's really great too to also use these 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 deities to to touch back into our femininity and our sensuality and to heal all parts of ourselves by remembering who they really were as well. Yeah, and there's an interesting sector of um, yogis. So I don't know if you've ever encountered this in the yoga world. So I met a yogi who spoke about the, I think they called themselves the Magdalens or something else. And it was surrounding, like, it was almost like the teachings of Mary Magdalene, but through the, the original teachings, almost like through a yogic lens. Mm -hmm. And there was like some mantras and mudras and postures involved. And none of these teachings were, ever allowed to be like shared in text or in this or that like it always had to be passed down through experience and word of mouth and they do it in secret um so I guess this has been going on for thousands of years and they don't promote it you're basically invited and so this yogi that I met was invited to one of their ceremonies and teachings where she said typically there's no more than a dozen you know, women in the room and going over some of these experiences. Wow. And it's kind of incredible and mind blowing to think that there's these groups of people on the planet sharing teachings that are still so underground. 
that you you can't even find them or look for it. Oh my gosh. It it <laughs> and I guess it exists within every country and there's there's proof of it kind of thing. And it's yeah, it comes up and those seeds are are just planted and continuously nurtured through the generations as they pulled in and invite. So say if one of them met you and said, would you like to be a teacher? And then you'd be invited. And yeah, it was, it's very interesting. Oh my goodness. How that works. And I, I'm just like, okay, universe, bring me into one of these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody up there listening, <laughs> we're in, we're down. <laughs> but I don't know if you've heard of that. No. Um, I've heard of like Magdalene sisters and things mm. like that, but I never heard of it being like like a private secret kind of meeting ceremony kind of thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Almost like a secret society, but like, yeah, <laughs> they, I know. Yeah. We, we really don't know what they do in there, but I know there's, um, that they're looked upon as yogis as well because wow. they share, okay. yeah they share that the her teachings through almost a yogic lens oh my gosh I love that yeah we are interested so <laughs> let us know <laughs> if you're listening <laughs> oh my god that's so great I love it too because it's like they kept like obviously it wouldn't need to be in secret today like no one's gonna get burned at the stake for that but I love how it's um just they're they're keeping it in the very sacred ancient tradition. I I'm I, I certify I had two people to Reiki, and that's something with that I've learned within Reiki is that uh, when when these teachings were happening, when a lot of them really started to begin, it was during like the witch trials and all these kinds of things, and so that's why there's so many symbols out there. You know, you tend to only work with like four main Reiki symbols, but there's so many more and there's various ways to draw just like one of them. And it's because so much of it was taught through word of mouth. And if anything was written down, it was burned um, just so they could get rid of all evidence. Really? Yeah. That's changed obviously. But I, I, I just like love that, the idea that, um, mm -hmm. that this is happening still. And it's a very sacred tradition yeah so, hiding it <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah I agree because I I really um love and appreciate that we are in a time where you and I can have this conversation mm -hmm. and we are not going to be burned at the stake yeah. you and I are you know both in countries where we are safe to talk about this yeah and I feel I feel very privilege to do so yeah I agree it's an honor <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah I do get um <laughs> last week and I was really promoting my breathe and receive membership for the Christ consciousness I did have quite a few comments and messages from people telling me how awful I was for using oh. using Mary and stuff for financial gain I'm like yeah. well you know I yeah. I still got to pay my bills. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, I feel really called to share this. Like, this isn't any sort of, I'm not, I'm not being manipulative with it at all. I just feel really mm -hmm. called to teach and share this. And, you know, like, to me, God and universe is all one and it's abundance and it's love and it's safety and support and all of that. And, you know, and then Mother Mary, like with Mother Earth, and again, more safety and support and abundance. It just, we're here to be prosperous. I don't need to, you know, like the whole idea of like suffering and, uh, you know, just like, you, you know, just the suffering that we, I feel like I it was taught a lot in, in religion back in the day. Uh, yeah. it, just, it doesn't need to be that. You're right. And that happens in all, like all of the worlds. Like I found when I started Reiki, people were like, oh, I can't believe you charge for Reiki. Healing yeah. should be free. I'm like, well, who's going to feed me? <laughs> who's going to house me? <laughs> and like, is there an expectation that I'm literally, I have to live on the streets to, to heal and help people. Yeah. And it's, and I think it happens even as an intuitive reader, I got it. And yeah, so it's, it's interesting that you're, you're meeting it within the Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, I, I, when you share that, I see it as like a, a clearing, you know what I mean? Like I see, almost like your guides are like, yeah, like pulling it into your heart, clearing for awareness of more of that, like, um, 
you know, that belief, you know, all those beliefs yeah. that we hold as healers and, and just to, to continue to work with that thread just for a little awareness. Yes. Yes. You know? I love that. It's yeah. A it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, here's a little light. Here's a little thread um, for you to witness and observe. Yes. 100% because yeah, I mean totally I've gotten that too like with Reiki everything pretty much everything I've ever offered Someone's pretty much told me that I should be doing it for free and I'm like, yeah. you know? <laughs> like And I mean I may I would consider that if you know, I had another different job, but this is my job So, you know, yes. why aren't accountants? Mm -hmm doing their job for free because I need my taxes done. Right, right. And that's a necessity. <laughs> right, and it's like I don't choose to have what my taxes done. Like I'm, it's I have to have, <laughs> it's, it's law, I have to have my taxes done, so you should just do my taxes for free, right? <laughs> like, <it's laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad we cleared that up, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... So do you think that Mother Mary can be a guide? Like, so I guess that's one of my biggest questions, and I'm just curious on how you feel about that. If she can be, like, a, a guide, like a spirit guide or spirit a guide. guide. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... Honestly, I'm the way I roll is whatever feels right for you. Yeah. If you feel like she can be a guide, then she's a guide. Mm -hmm. You know, I I truly feel like she's guided and mentored me my entire life. <laughs> so for me, yeah, she is a mentor. She is a guide. Um, she shows up in healings and um yeah, in readings, she shows up all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've ever done, maybe you already do this in your um, membership, but she often shows me these, uh, guides me through these womb healings, mm -hmm. uh, like into her womb purification healings. I don't know if you've ever um, done that, but it, it's so cool to like walk people through that as well and even walk yourself through it. Yeah. It's, so fun so I'm not surprised that you've channeled that as well yes, yes. and it's so good there you know it's just it's I so good room. yeah one of my um healing sessions I had with a client last month um the two Marys showed up and they were both like yeah it was like a simultaneous womb space of the Marys mm -hmm. and we're just like okay here we go so we like entered that space and oh it was incredible mm -hmm. so much fun so much can transpire in there yeah it really can yeah I just you know I was curious how you felt about it because you know my very first time that I was like connected with her you know I was told that she's not a guide <laughs> and you know, so and the, Why not? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Because I was just like, I and I still have yet to really. Um, I am curious as to the why behind why the fact that we're so connected like that. Um, but it's okay if I don't ever find that. I just, I just love to call upon her and Mary Magdalene and just you know, just feel that love and support and nurturing. And then yeah, like letting it channel through me into the sessions. It just, it just feels really yummy there it's so good <laughs> yeah. and I think you know gone are the days of the like because I think that like whole I call it kind of detachment and separation where you know if you weren't allowed to like use Mary as a guide because she's up here on this pedestal and you can't you know use her in that way whatever belief is there I think those days are are gone because we see that we, we are all one, you know, <laughs> and, and, and when you're in that oneness mindset, those, those questions just kind of disappear in it. Yeah. In a way, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. The, the hierarchy is gone. Right. Right. Yeah. She's not outside of us. She's within us. She's within us. And so when we're connecting to her as a guide, we're connecting to that within us mm -hmm. and that's yeah that's like the main message that I think you know if this conversation could trickle out from my intention would be like mother Mary Magdalene 
all of the female deities are, are within us. And when you connect and share in conversation, whether that be in prayer, um, you're, you're really praying to that which is within. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which already lives within you to be revealed. If you can't see it or experience it, or if you're not, if you don't feel like you're experiencing it, yeah. it's there. It's always yeah. there, no matter what. No matter what, exactly. No matter what your perception is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yes, it's always here. We have it all. Even like the, the whole idea of heaven on earth. Like people are always like waiting, oh. waiting, waiting. No, it's here right now. Yes. Like, I know it may <laughs> sound, it may seem like it's chaotic and crazy out there. And I'm not saying like what we're experiencing is heaven on earth, but heaven on earth is within our hearts. It's within us. It's here. Like you just have to connect with that and let, let that be your truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, you know, Mary, the three Marys, God, Jesus, Buddha, I mean, even like Isis, Kalima, however you, like, how else you want to take it, they're all within you already. It's not something to search outwardly for. It's something to connect within. And yeah. even like, um, did you read Mary Magdalene Revealed by Megan Watterson? Have you read that yet? No, I have not. So good. But she um, does a lot of like the prayer of the heart and uh, just really listening and breathing and connecting within her own heart space as well. And just letting love be her main focus. Mm. And that's something that I really love to teach more than anything else. You know, people want to teach like the quantum leaps and law of attraction and all of that. And like, I'm all about all of it. Right. Um, but like, I'm like a, just this big believer that the more we just simply nurture ourselves, yeah, the, everything else is just going to be there for you. It, it just is going to, yeah, we share that. Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. I, I agree. And we share that thread of self love, like through, through what we speak, that's, that's what I believe too. If we can just love ourselves, mm -hmm. each human on the planet, just love ourselves so much within that we are loving each other because we are each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just can't help it, right? When you love yourself, you just can't help but be good to the world mm -hmm. and the world is good to you. And yeah. And I think right now in the world, we, we are seeing um, different manifestations of that, of that love being expressed, that love being called in, in very, very big ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, you know, it might not appear as such, but I feel it as such great love just calling in, calling in, continuing to call in that balance. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, like if you can't, if you feel like you can't love yourself, you can't, you're having a hard time forgiving yourself or whatever it may be, like literally just ask Mother Mary to love you. Ask her to show yeah. you how loved you are and you're going to feel it. If, if you don't want to, if Mother Mary is not your thing, ask God, ask Jesus, if, you know, anybody, like anything in, that you connect with, ask to be shown how loved you are and you'll feel it. You can start there. It's, it's a, it's a be beautiful place to start. It is a beautiful place to start. It's, it's the foundation and root of all healing. Mm -hmm. Any kind of healing is, is self love. That's, that's where it starts. That's, that's it. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> that's really the answer. The end period. <laughs> And, you know, sometimes when I start speaking about self-love, I can just, like, feel the eye rolls, right? Because it's become, <laughs> it's become so cliche. It really has. But, like, I'll never stop preaching about it. I don't give a crap how many self-love coaches there are out there or self-empowerment, whatever. Like, it's as simple as this. It's as simple as it gets. Like, I feel like, you know, our teachings are so simple because it's just – it's all that's needed, you know, like you don't need to do anything outside of you except for just connecting with your heart. 
you know, like that's it. It really is. Absolutely. And each moment is an opportunity for that is another opportunity for you to go deeper into that love to meet yeah. yourself there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, this conversation was amazing. We talked about it all. Do you <laughs> oh, no, I'm thinking back. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like, can, you know, are we like being too much or is it all over the place? I don't know. But like, I'm trusting that it's going to be beautiful. And <laughs> I, I love, I love these tangents because it is taking people on a journey and it's our heartfelt journey. What came through in the moment. Yes. Exactly. And everyone's along for the ride. <laughs> yes. like, your soul is going to resonate with what serves you and you'll just pass by the things that don't. I'm a big believer in that. Absolutely. So anything else that you want to add? Um, yeah, I'd really love to add to the conversation to speak to the people who are maybe um, challenged with, or flowing through some of the carrying some weight from maybe a religious background and wanting to connect with, you know, Mother Mary or Jesus or anyone else in the biblical ways um, from a new lens and a new perspective. Uh, I would just love to just share that, that it's okay. So if, so whatever those beliefs are, whatever your conditioning is, whatever those labels are and boxes that you have placed yourself in to know that it is just okay, whatever your beliefs are, whatever your relationship is, honor your relationship with um, Mother Mary, with Jesus, with any deity that you really, really, really connect to. And it doesn't matter what anyone else has taught you because your relationship is sacred. Mm. And that is what is most important. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for adding that. That's, that's very important for people to hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So how can people find you, connect with you? Do you have any offers out or coming out or? Yeah. So people can find me. Um, I'm most active on Instagram at uh, I am Natalie Soul, and I share a lot of great conversations there, but you can find me and connect to me there, but I'm also a, as I mentioned, a yoga teacher. I'm actually a chakra yoga teacher, mm -hmm. and I am an intuitive reader um, doing reading sessions now for almost 20 years, hard to believe. Mm -hmm and Reiki sessions and deep healing sessions and coaching and for anyone who wants to get in contact with me you can find me on Instagram or also um, the link to my website is there and all the ways that you can um, work with me and one of my um, offerings that I'm really promoting this summer are actually my my embodiment sessions and my healing sessions are are feeling like um really feeling called to to really share those and open up space for for those sessions so if anyone is feeling called to do some some deep healing uh whether that be transformational work or whatever healing whatever that looks like i would love to share a conversation and um yeah always always open to meeting first and uh wherever the session takes us takes us <laughs> awesome yep and all of the information will be in the show notes below yes thank you thank you so much for this conversation and and for your podcast i'm i'm a listener <laughs> yes i'm so grateful <laughs> And so thank you so much for all of the other amazing guests you have and even the solo casts and all the amazing conversations um, that you share. And thank you for the, for the work that you do. I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> Ditto. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.